Season 5 of Starz's hit series Outlander was the season that departed the most from the novels by best-selling author Diana Gabaldon. Rather than just covering the events in The Fiery Cross, showrunner, executive producer and writer Matthew B. Roberts also expanded the story by digging into the sixth book in the series, A Breath of Snow and Ashes, to make for an eventful season. One of the points he pulled from A Breath of Snow and Ashes was the storyline where Claire Fraser, Katrina Balfe, is kidnapped and brutally raped by a group of men from Brownsville before Jamie, Sam Hewen, can come to her rescue. It wasn't the first time that an Outlander storyline has covered the subject of sexual assault. Back in Season 1, it was Jamie who was raped by another man while in prison, and it was addressed again in Season 4 when Brianna, Sophie Skelton, was assaulted by the pirate Stephen Bonnet, Ed Spillers. So, Roberts was very aware of the need to handle the subject matter cautiously and thoughtfully. We wanted to be very careful with it, he said during an awards line screening series virtual panel. So, before, executive producer, Tony, Graffia, and I started writing, we started doing as much research as we possibly could. We have in the past dealt with rape and many kinds of assaults on the show, so we have a lot of consultants that we've talked to and really mind their expertise before we even start the process. One of the bits of information they gleaned in their research is that people who suffer traumas not only sexual assault, but all kinds of traumas sometimes disassociate with what's going on in front of them as a survival technique. So, for the Never My Love Season 5 series finale episode, which is when Claire's assault takes place, Roberts and Graffia wanted to provide an escape for both the character and the audience in the form of a survival technique. As we started to break the story, I went to Katrina and Sam, and told them about the idea, Roberts continues. I could be wrong, but I think they really liked the idea. And Katrina, if I remember correctly, didn't want to shy away from the assault. But since the idea to have Claire dissociate during the assault was not something found in Gabaldon's books, Roberts needed a plan for where she would go in her mind. The decision was made for her to revisit her Boston apartment in the 1960s, where her family, many of whom can't actually time travel, are gathered for Thanksgiving. We had to pick a time period, so, production designer, Gary Steele and, costume designer, Trisha Bigger could design it, he adds. We had to pick a period, but we didn't want it to be specific. So, I asked them both to mess it up. And if you watch the episode, you'll notice that there are pieces in what we call the dream escapes that are messed up. By that Roberts means that elements of the costumes and the apartment don't appear as they would normally. For example, there'll be objects in one scene that aren't there anymore in another, or young Ian's, John Bell. Uniform is embellished with wampum beads in lieu of military decorations. Or, there's a moment when Jamie wraps a Fraser plaid around Claire that echoes a moment from season 1, and there's also an abstract painting of Fraser's Ridge, which Claire hadn't yet seen when she actually lived in the apartment. Because Claire was in such a state, she wasn't imagining this as a perfect place, Roberts said. It was just her escape to get away from, what she was experiencing. Kat and Sam brought a lot to the table, and I had ideas about what it would look like and how it would feel. We wrote out a bunch of dialogue for it, and really over the shooting, it just got trimmed down to really what it is, and then when we got to editing, we trimmed it down even more. In the end, it was an incredibly powerful piece to cap off the season.